Welcome back to chapter four, and this will be part four. And in this one, we're still talking about how to name uh, and write formulas for ionic compounds. But in this section, we're going to talk about polyatomic ions. So most polyatomic ions are what we call oxyanions, oxyanions. So you're going to see an oxygen in there somewhere, OK? Um, usually oxygen and another element, like down here you see NO3, NO2, SO4, that kind of thing. All right. Now, if there are two ions in a series, the first one is going to end in ATE. So instead of ide, if it's a polyatomic, it's going to end in ATE. The one that has one fewer oxygens is going to end in ITE, OK? Now, there's no rhyme or reason to this. So nitrate is NO3, nitrite is NO2. But sulfate is, in, is SO4, and so one less sulfite is SO3. So, and, and Chlorine and the other halogens can even go farther than that. The, they have chlorate, which is three. They have chlorite, which is one less, two. But then they can have some a, one more higher and one more lower. So the one that's lower than the chlorite is going to be hypochlorite. The one greater than the chlorate is going to be called per chlorate okay so the halogens are really the only ones that do this and so if you see them um, I'm going to show you in a minute you always want to know what your eight is what your chlorate is and then you can figure out the rest of them by looking at how many more or less um, oxygens that it has so I made up this little chart for you because the relationship between the polys depends on the O so you memorize nitrate, sulfate, phosphate, and chlorate, OK? You, you memorize these four. That's only four. So you have nitrate, which is NO3, sulfate, which is SO4, phosphate, which is PO4, and then chlorate, which is ClO3. Now remember, you're going to have the um, polyatomic um, sheet, the cheat sheet on the test, but it's really important that you kind of get these because th the rest of them are going to come from this eight, and the these four are the ones you're going to see quite a bit, all right, and so if you add an H to the beginning of this, an H becomes an ick, and it's going to be nitric acid. If the NO3 if, it, if you lose one oxygen down to NO2, it becomes nitrite. The acid from it is us. So I say eight becomes ick, and it becomes us when you're making an acid out of it. And notice all I did was add H's to the front to make it neutral. And then that's how it forms the acid. So NO3 is 8, NO2 is 8, SO4 is 8, SO3 is 8 because it's one less, PO4 is 8, PO3 is 8, and, and ClO3 is chlorate, and ClO2 is 8. All right, so by memorizing four things, you know now you now know 16 things. You know the acids and you know the ites. Okay, the chlorate, remember, it's the one that's a little bit different. Chlorate is the ClO3, like we just talked about. One more oxygen would be per chlorate because it's higher than the eight. Your ite is one less one less oxygen than the eight, right? And that's chlorite, like we saw up here. But then one less than the eight is lower hypochlorite. 
So you don't expect to just like get this right right away. You're, you're going to have to use them. You're going to have to look at this and you're going to have to digest this a little bit. So I'm throwing it out here pretty quick because I know you can go ahead and, and um, go back and re-listen to this again and practice things, okay? So the polyatomic ions, the way we name them is they just have specific names, okay? So that nitrate, nitrite, that's their name. And so that's what you call it. So if you have sodium, Na and NO2, that's sodium. The nitrate is NO3. So this is one less oxygen, so I know that's nitrite. Okay? The one like I just showed you on that. So this is what you're going to be using on the test, and it's got most of them on here for you, okay? Now, there may be a few that aren't on here. So if they aren't, you need to put them on. Notice that there's only one polyatomic, which is a positive ion, and that's ammonium. And so since it acts as the metal, okay, you're going to you're gonna write it and name it at the beginning rather than at the end, like you would normally do a polyatomic. Everything else is negative. Everything else acts as the nonmetal. So you can look these up when you see them. It even has your charges for you. You're welcome. Okay, so we're going to name this one first. So I have Li2Cr2O7. Now, when you see this, all right, we're doing binary compounds, okay? That means whatever this first thing you see is, that's the metal. Everything else is the second part. So you name this first, and this is a metal called lithium. And it's a representative, so I don't have to do Roman numerals or anything. And then I look at my list, and you're going to see that Cr207 is called dichromate. And that's its name. This whole thing is dichromate. So you're going to name the metal first, and then everything after that is, stays together as a polyatomic ion. So you have to name it all together. And then you have ClO32. Remember, you don't tell me that there's more than one because the, the um, charges will tell me that. So when you name this one, you name it by its SN, whatever that is, and then ClO3, whatever that is. And then it wants you to draw one or write the formula for cobalt 2 phosphate. Remember, this is going to tell you what that charge is on the cobalt because it's multivalent. And then you're going to have to make sure you, when you write the formula, that you have enough phosphates. And the phosphate charge won't ever change. Okay. Now, I want to do this one for you right quick because this is a good one. All right. So cobalt 2 is CO2 plus. Phosphate is PO4 3 minus. Okay. Now, this is where I was talking earlier about swap and drop. This whole thing is a minus 3 charge, and this is a plus 2 charge. So to get this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 3 and put it down there, and I'm going to take the 2 and put it right there. Now, the only rule here is if I then write this as CO3, see what I did? The 3 comes here, the 2 goes there. That's called the swap and drop. Works every time, unless you have to reduce. Okay, so CO3, PO4, 2. Now, if I leave it like that, that looks like that I have 42 oxygens and 1P, right, over here. So if I have more than one polyatomic, I have to put that in parentheses so that you know that I've got two PO4s because two times a minus three is minus six. And then, the t and then I have three times plus two is a plus six for my cobalt so that it's neutral. So this whole thing is a minus three. 
So I need two of that whole thing. So hydrates. This is a really weird thing. Um, some compounds are hydrated. That is, a water molecule is actually associated with every formula unit of this compound. And so because of that, we have to write the hydrate as part of the formula. So if I have MgSO4, I've already learned that that's going to be mag mag magnesium sulfate. And if it has this dot 7H2O, then I'm going to have to use the prefixes. Okay, and here they are. And 9 is Nana. And 10 is Deca. Okay. Um, so I look over here and Hepta is 7, so it's Hepta Hydrate. So it's magnesium sulfate, hepta hydrate. COCl2 dot 6H2O is cobalt 2 chloride. We already know how to do those. And then 6 is hexahydrate. So you use those prefixes. This is the only time you get to use prefixes in ionic compounds is to tell me how many waters are associated with a hydrated compound. So write the formula for barium chloride hexahydrate. So I've got barium and chloride. Barium is a plus two, minus one, right? So this needs to be two as well. So one X equals two. So I've got to have two chlorines. All right, so BACL2, and then it tells me hexahydrate. So I have six. H2O's. If it's got a half a water, and that's just to make the numbers come out right, that's hemi. It's the prefix for half, hemi. And that's polyatomic ions. Um, your oxy anions primarily, and hydrates.